<laughs> oh my god, Kojo. Jesus Christ. He just won't let him Rocky go. Dang. Whoa, dang. Look at him go. He just keeps pulling her back down. Yo. <laughs> Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Strike the Blood, episode 12. And, uh, Kojo got a lot of action in this episode. More ways than one. I mean, wow. I, I, I didn't expect all this development in one episode. I, I expect this episode to be really good, but I didn't expect all of this stuff to happen. I thought it would be mostly, like, mostly fight scenes with uh, him trying to defeat canon and you know him trying to beat Beatrice you know uh, people trying to beat people right that's that's pretty much what I thought it would be but it was it was mostly development on the harem side right like we in the beginning we see obviously that could just survive the like the light blade angel blade thing to the chest um and apparently it's not just because he's immortal it's because he has a familiar whose power is able to counter that of Angel Foe. And Kojo is using it subconsciously, right? And Lafoli is the one who's explaining all this. And she also says, she decides that she is going to awaken that familiar. And when she says that she has this big smile on her face, you can tell she's looking forward to it. You can tell. She just starts taking her clothes off and everything. And Ragi's like, okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I should be the one to do this. And her reasoning is because she likes him, but she doesn't realize that that's her reasoning. She's She says it's because she's his observer and everything, which is why Himuragi isn't a good fit for Kojo. Because unlike people like Sayaka or Asagi or even Lafolia, she doesn't do things because she likes him. She does things because she's his observer. Okay, whether she admits whether... That's just a cover-up or not. It doesn't mean the fact that she herself thinks that it's because, you know, she's his observer. Well, maybe not. She probably thinks deep down inside that she likes him, but she doesn't think she likes him. Her feelings of her feeling to her duty is stronger than her feelings to him. All right, that's what I'm trying to say here. All right, but uh, whichever one you want to go with, she uses one of those reasons to replace Lafolia and she starts unbuttoning her shirt and everything. She cuts her arm, drinks her own blood, kisses him and like feeds her own blood to him. Alright. And uh Koto drinks it, then all of a sudden, boom, his vampiric instincts just awaken. Alright, they just kick in. And even Rocky hears 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 him and she like, gets up. She's like, Oh, uh, are, are you awake? And he pulls her back down down, kisses her again, she tries to get back up, she, he pulls her back down again, <laughs> he, and she's like, wait, oh, wait, stop, the princess is watching, he gets on top of her and just, just bites in, like, oh man, he just like starts, like literally, like, he's just ravaging her right now, like, by, by the time he regains his consciousness, after which is after his wound heals, like, um, Himuragi's unconscious, and she's just laying there, he's like, wait, what the, oh, what is going on here? He has no clue what's going on, and <laughs> so, so Mofuli ends up explaining everything to him, and uh, she she also mentions that no familiar was awakened, which is what I wanted. All right, I wanted I didn't want every familiar to be like one and done. Like oh you oh for familiar for the first familiar you need one person's blood, second familiar another person's blood one more you get another familiar one more you get another familiar i want it to be like you know for one, one you needed two two or three or something like that and that's what i got here it turns out that uh Himuraki was not enough because it's a two-headed dragon or something like that i didn't i was hoping that that wouldn't be the logic they used i wasn't happy about that i just wanted to be a familiar that just needed two people to be its medium but um something like it's so strong it needs two mediums not one well, I mean, it is strong, but the, that's, that wasn't the main reason. The main reason I used it was because it has two heads, which is stupid. But, um, yeah, so Lafolio realized that the, the familiar doesn't awaken, 
and she sees her chance, she just jumps right in. Like, literally, <laughs> her shirt is still unbuttoned, and she just hugs Kojo and lets him suck her blood, all right? And once that happens, uh, Himuragi regains consciousness at some point, and um, they all put their clothes back on, <laughs> and uh, he, uh, Kojo breaks out of the ice with Al Naso Minium, and uh, you know all the other guys that are out there. They see this, including Bakura, and Bakura he starts arguing with Himuragi, or maybe it was Himuragi that started arguing with him. Who who knows? Doesn't it doesn't really matter. The point is that they start an argument, and during this argument, we learn that Cannon is actually Bakura's niece. Okay, Cannon's mom was Kensei's younger sister. So, not only is Bakura Cannon's uncle, she that that would make him Lafolia's great uncle. Okay, so that's 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 an interesting family tree there. <laughs> it's it's a real interesting family tree, but um. It turns out that because he is legitimately related to Canon, he does care about her like his own daughter, and he wants to make her happy, and he believes that by doing this he is protecting her and therefore making her happy by putting her on a higher plane than all of these other humans in the world, and by making, making her just a spiritual entity that will be called up to see God, you know, all this stuff. And he thinks that that makes her happy. And this is what they end up arguing about, whether or not that make, does make her happy. And Kojo steps in and argues too. But uh, this is when Beatrice comes in, okay? Uh, she attacks him with uh, her familiar thing uh, and familiar weapon. Her uh, What was it called again? The live weapon or something like that? Wait, hold on. Hold on. What's it called? Um, Intelligent weapon. There we go. It's an intelligent weapon. Right, it took me like ten minutes, but <laughs> it took me like ten minutes, but I did eventually find out. Okay, it's an intelligent weapon. All right, so she, <laughs> so she, she comes in and she attacks him. She attacks them with her intelligent weapon. Okay, and um, she she calls in clones, clones of the angels that Cannon had beaten already. Right, so apparently you can create clones in the series too. Um, she also wants to create a clone of Lafolia, just normal clones because people would buy them. Because let's face it, Lafolia is awesome. All right, <laughs> she she just is. All right. Um, plus other clones that are not normal that they would use to turn into angels, and then they would sell those too. All right. So um, she want so she brings in these clones and. Um, Kojo gets mad about that, all right, and Himuragi steps in and says, you know, this isn't just your fight, this is our fight, all right, and uh, this that's not the first time she said that either, she said it a couple times already, all right, and um, yeah, they fight, I mean, <laughs> Himuragi fights Beatrice, and again, it was a short fight, but still a pretty good, awesome fight for the few seconds that it lasted, and it ends with Young Lightning, boom, all right, and um, Lo, the pilot guy, he ends up getting beaten by Lafolia. And Lafolia, she temporarily becomes a spirit in order to activate the false holy sword of the Volander system, which is what we saw at the beginning of the arc, where uh, Beatrice was on that ship that um, she was on the ship that Lafolia was on, and she escaped from, and that one guy had false holy sword too. Right, so we've seen this before, and this time Lafolia is the one that activates it, and she just boom it hits Beatrice with it. It doesn't cut her in half or anything. It uh, it cuts part of her uh, outfit, which I wasn't complaining about, but but um, yeah, I mean, she kind of just gets beaten by that. I don't know what kind of effect it had on her, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she didn't really say. Um, I doubt it did something like purify her of her evil thoughts or whatever. But I, 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 don't, I honestly don't know what it did. It just knocked her out. <laughs> but whatever. Um, after that, the um, cannon starts fighting. 
Kojo. And Kojo, he uses his new familiar, Al Mizan Mercury. I'll just call it Mercury, it's much simpler. He uses his new familiar, Mercury, which is the two-headed dragon, like I mentioned before. And it just goes and eats Cannon's wings. And, and those wings were the extra-dimensional barrier that put her in a different plane. So once those were eaten, she was brought down to their dimension. And once they were, once she was brought down to their dimension, Himuragi was able to go in and uh, destroy the spiritual evolution magic or whatever with uh, the the spear thing, the German name from whatever, whatever, something something with an S and then something with a W. I, I, I whatever. It's a, it's a spear. It's a spear thing that cancels out magic, right? She 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 hits Cannon with that, and that's it. And then uh, Mercury just goes and eats the rest of what's left. Um, its nickname is Dimension Eater, so it's I guess it's a well-known familiar, more so than the rest of them. Uh, if it if it has a nickname like that, actually I might just call it Dimension Eater from now on, because that's a cool name. Mercury is a cool name too. Well, whatever. I'll whatever I'll call it, whatever I call it. I'll call it that. But um, that's pretty much the end of this conflict. Um, Cannon eventually wakes up and regains consciousness, and Lafoli kind of tells her, you know, you were saved by Kojo and Himiragi and me, and I'm your family, and and all, and, all, and stuff like that. And uh, we see Sayaka arrive, Natsuki arrives, and after that we see. Kensei, Makora, in custody, these huge handcuffs, and a Yaze is talking to him. And apparently that apparently there are only supposed to be three progenitors. It's, it's like with Magi. There are only supposed to be three Magi. Well, there are only supposed to be three progenitors. And since a fourth progenitor arrived, it must mean that there is some danger approaching where they will need the fourth need the power of a fourth progenitor. And um and Makora, Kensei, he says that if he can create a weapon that can defeat the fourth progenitor, then that means that that danger will definitely be avoided. Right? So, and Yaze says, well, like, you're not, uh, you're not wrong about that, I guess. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't say you're right, but he doesn't say you're wrong either. He's, well, he kind of says he's right then. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, and he walks away and he says that he's gonna leave Kensei in the care of the company. Whatever that means. Well, I know what it means. It's a company, but it's the company he works for, or a group he works for. There. Um, and the last part of this episode is Lafolia saying her goodbyes. She kisses him around in the cheek, hugs her, then she just kisses Kojo on the lips. Alright. In front of Hiburagi and in front of Sayaka. <laughs> and Sayaka's, Sayaka's like flipping out. Like, you know what? Just die. All right? Just die. <laughs> and Hiburagi, she kind of keeps calm like she usually does. Like she kind of just gets the vein popping up on her head. Not visually, but like that's the type of attitude she has about it. Like she's not, she doesn't get mad like Sayaka, but she's still kind of annoyed. Calm yet annoyed. And uh, it turns out that Nakisa Naki, Naki shows up, and she saw it too. And she's not mad at all. She doesn't really care that much. She's just trying to figure out who it was. But Asagi's with her too, and Asagi gets mad. <laughs> and Kojo asks, tries to change the subject by asking her what the kiss was about. He doesn't refer to it, it as a kiss, though. He refers it to that. Like, he wanted to figure out what that was about. And Asagi lets her emotions get the best of her, and she just says, you know, it was just a greeting, you know? And she's going to be beating herself up about that later. But, you know, she just kind of let her anger get the best of her and tried to act like she doesn't really care that much about him and that she's not jealous at all. And yeah. Um, but him and Rocky, here's, <laughs> here's them talking about that. And she's starting to figure out, well, what is that exactly? <laughs> so Kojo's in trouble. All right? <laughs> yeah, Kojo's in trouble. All right. Oh, I mean, this episode had a lot of development in it. I mean, Asagi was the only girl to have a, in the harem to have a kiss with Kojo. And this one episode, he sucked the blood of Lafolia, plus kissed her, plus he kissed Himuragi a few times, plus he sucked her blood again. Right, so... 
a lot of development in the in the harem part of the series. But uh, yeah, so he's getting much longer than I intended intended for it to be. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all for the episode. Next, the next episode we get the labyrinth of the blue witch, which we see a girl wearing blue in Kojo's apartment. So I don't know. Just just throw this out there. Maybe she's the blue witch, but. That's, that seems way too obvious. Um, yeah, that's it for the episode. Uh, overall, um, I'll give it... I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Because, like I said, there was a lot of development with Kojo and Himuragi, Kojo and Rafolia. A tad bit of development with uh, Asagi and Sayaka at the end. We had a good, yet a short but good fight between Himuragi and... Uh, Beatrice, Morphonia used the false holy sword of the Volander system, and Kojo got, uh, used Mercury, the Dimension Eater. And so, it was, I thought it was a great episode, a lot of good stuff happened, so yeah. But uh, that's it for now, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe. We might get a, we might get an episode next week, we might not. Who knows, but, because it's Christmas week next week. Kill Out Kill isn't coming out. So, Naruto Shippuden, I don't think, is coming out either. So, Strike the Blood might not come out either, but who knows? Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Either way, I'll see you guys next time.